Okay. Now I have to I have to punch something. Uh, it's good to go. Okay. Okay. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Wonderful. Okay. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. All right. That's more like it. That's more like it. My name is David Fordham. I teach at several institutions, and I'm the writer of uh, two books. One of them is True Stories of Black South Carolina, shown here, and the other is Voices of Black South Carolina. Both are history books, so feel free to step right up after this is over with if you would like to uh, purchase them. But anyway, I'm here to do a little bit of storytelling for you. Two very brief stories. One of, one of them is from a book that's coming up called Mr. Parts of Me, and it's based on the stories that my father told me when I was a kid that kind of helped me get through life. And this one is a story that he told me that's a classic of black folklore called The Slave Fight. Back in the days, there was a slave by the name of Old John. And Old John was one of these guys who never was beaten by his master because he always used, he understood that the biggest weapon that he had was in his head and not in his hands. So one day, the master and the other guy were just arguing about, yeah, you know, I bet you my old boy John, he can lick any one of those slaves on your plantation. Oh yeah, well nobody can beat my Goliath. I tell you what, I'll bet you my plantation against yours that my Goliath can beat old John. All right, bet. So the two had a bet. Master went back home and then he said, John, come here. Yeah, what can I do for you, boss? Well, I see, John, I just bet my whole plantation that you could beat this fellow called Goliath. You bet your whole plantation that I can beat this other fellow? That's right. Hmm. Well, let's say we sweeten the pot a little bit, Master. Sweeten the pot? What are you talking about? Well, see, if you're going to get this whole plantation, that means you're going to get way more than just me and my family, right? Well, uh, yeah, what are you driving at? Well, what do you say that if I win this fight, not only do you get that other man's plantation, but me and my family get our freedom? Hey, wait a minute now, John. I don't know. Hey, now, remember now. If I win, you're going to get his plantation which is way bigger than yours now. Think about that, Master. Well, you've got a point there, John, so, all right, bet, let's do it like that, okay? The next day of the fight, John was all ready to go. His family was waiting to be free. The master was there, all proud, waiting for everything to start, and people had gathered around all around the countryside, when all of a sudden, John, all of a sudden, John and his master looked up, uh, master? Yeah, John, you notice something? Notice what? You notice the sky got kind of dark all of a sudden? Yeah, I kind of noticed that. Hey, what's that going on in the distance? And all of a sudden they heard a... <laughs> and they looked up and almost blackened the sun, blackened the sun was this huge six foot nine wow. color of coal, shiny with muscle. My name is Goliath. And so John started shaking. The master started shaking. He said, John, yeah, you think it's too late to get out of this? Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. So John, so the last came over. And John immediately went right to the master's wife, smacked him in the face, <laughs> and the <Goliath went, laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, everybody in the crowd grabs up a pistol. John's master grabs a rope. John! You better explain right now. What you mean sit smacking up on my wife? Well, Master, two things to that. What's that? Number one, I won the fight. Uh, yeah, you did, didn't you? That's right, so that plantation is yours. And so what? Uh, now I got my freedom too. But wait a minute, what you slapping my wife for? Very simple, Master, for your benefit. Because see, think about it now. If he thought that I was bad enough to slap the Master's wife, imagine what I'd do to him. Uh -oh. All right, that's good. Yeah. Very good. The next one is a piece that I wrote some years ago that uh, I often use to close my up here in public. It's called The Instrument, and it goes as follows. Way back in Germany, in the middle of the 19th century, was a man by the name of Matthews Home, and he invented a device that I'm going to call here The Instrument. Unlike people who could not afford pianos and violins and harps and that sort of thing, the instrument was cheap and was easy to carry around. So cheap and so easy that when these Germans started coming to the shores of the United States, they brought with them the instrument. It came to the shores of New York and spread downwards through the United States of America, among other people who were too poor to afford pianos, 
violins and other major instruments. But then it fell into the hands of the African American. And many of those, in those days, many of the African Americans could not afford to go to school. So therefore, that many of them did not have the articulation they possessed to express what was going on with them. But in the hands of them, they took this instrument, and they took the yearning of, the, and the yearning of their experience. <laughs> Step it on. Oh, okay. And in the middle of that, they took the yearning of their experience of, whoa, what is that? Okay. In the middle of that, they took the yearning of their experience and managed to create beautiful forms of music such as The moral of the story is, people, that's an example of taking the lemons that life gives you and making with that lemonade. My name is David Porter. Have a good day. Very good. Very good.